I was living in California at the time in a community um, just outside of Sacramento. I had um, joined a women's bicycling team there and I hadn't ridden my bike I think probably till, since junior high. But these gals knew I liked being out and about and was somewhat athletic and so they invited me to join this team. Well I'm not sure who initiated it but um, someone off um, our team suggested about doing the Seattle to Portland Bicycle Classic, the STP. We start on the campus at the University of Washington and then take two days to ride down to, I believe it's Holiday Park in Portland, Oregon. And um, since I was from the Northwest originally, I grew up in the Puget Sound region, I had heard of the STP and it's like, I'm cycling now, let's do this. Well, on um, June 18th, uh, my riding, one of my riding partners, Kathy and I, were out on a training ride. We were riding in the bicycle lane, so we're out of the lane, um, flow of traffic. We were riding single file, we had our helmets on. But it was about 10 o'clock in the morning, a young woman, just 19 years old, swerved into the bicycle lane and hit both of us, and then ran over one of us. So we were both seriously hurt. And then we would also find out later that um, for her blood alcohol contact, she blew a .10, and that was about noon. Alcohol-related crashes are costly, they're lingering, and they're life-changing. Kathy um, initially was unconscious at the scene, and um, but she suffered a concussion, bloco, um, broken clavicle, as well as there are, I believe, 15 bones in her back were broken. So paramedics worked with her. She woke up as they were um, preparing her to be transported to a hospital in Sacramento. Um, she um, had surgery, put plates and pins in her back. It's a miracle Kathy's alive, uh, that she's walking. I was unconscious. I suffered a severe head trauma, and I also suffered a severe leg uh, um, injury on my left leg. It tore skin away and has left quite the scar. Then I had a craniotomy, and a craniotomy is where they remove a portion of your skull, and if you're, uh, and it's called a bone flap. And so if your bone flap is in good condition, they take it off, and they insert it about right here in your stomach. I have about a four inch scar right here where my bone flap was placed. It was a good condition. I was also in a coma for just over a week. And I also have am had amnesia. I actually can tell you where I was in the middle of April at a retreat in Lake Tahoe. But that Monday, I can't tell you where I was. So the, the cost to me in light of all of that that happened is one is was my physically and, and, and mentally. I still had some injuries with um, my leg, even though my leg is doing incredibly well, um, it's still not 100%. Um, I still have my leg and I'm grateful. But my brain injury has been a th uh, something I probably will continue to rehab well, for that will take the rest of my life. I have to do things over and over and over again sometimes so I won't forget, but my brain, injury is still impacting my, my life. And, and so it's taken a while, but um, relationships are starting to come. I'm connected in a good church. I'm working again and I'm familiar with where I live now. I don't need to pull out my GPS all the time anymore to get around. The choice a driver made to drive her car that day caused a ripple effect. I just wanna ask you, in light of the choices that you make, hard ones maybe, things you look back and regret on, maybe driving while impaired, who's standing in the your choices ripple effect? Because every choice has a ripple effect. If you're married, your spouse is. If you have kids, your kids are. Your financially will be impacted. Your workplace will probably be impacted. And you have to ask yourself, is that choice worth it? Because the reality is we have a choice. And not just one, one or two choices. Do I drink, don't I drink? There are more than that. I picked up the phone and was greeted by an officer of the California Highway Patrol. He proceeded to tell me Kathy was hit by a drunk driver. I literally dropped the phone and I just cried. It was unbelievable enough that my sister was hit by a car on her bicycle 
and now I'm told this accident could have been prevented. Someone purposefully got behind the wheel of their car after drinking and hit two women who were riding their bicycles in the bike lane. That was a statement my sister made at the sentencing hearing for Brandy, the young woman who hit us. And I don't think my sister realized what she said. Alcohol-related crashes, deaths, injuries are 100% preventable, but they go back to a choice, a choice that Brandy made that morning to drive her car while she was impaired. One less story of loss like mine. Remember me when you think about driving impaired.